I'm joined right now, ladies and gentlemen, by Dr. Colin Lister Gishray, a prominent Beverly Hills surgeon who's an internal artist. He turns ordinary internal organs into works of art. Uh, Dr. Gishray, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank what, you. what is the purpose uh, of your internal art? Well, you know, nature has been very provident with our exterior aspect, uh, but uh, hasn't done such a good job with the interior. And there are people who feel that they've been shortchanged in their insides. And they uh, come to me uh, after having received x-ray plates in the course of regular medical examinations. And they look at their lungs, they look at their intestines, and they think uh, uh, this could be improved. Mm -hmm. uh, and they come to me because they know that I'm, uh, I have a reputation uh, for aesthetic uh, qualities in the internal human structure. Forgive me for saying this, but I can't help but notice you look remarkably uh, like that uh, the, that famous radio dramatist, Norman Corwin. Is there uh, any connection? No, no, we're not related, but we do. Uh, I've heard from, I've never met him. I'd like to meet him, but uh, I've, I've, uh, I, uh, I've, I've heard him. Uh -huh. I sometimes get his bills, and he sometimes gets mine. Back to the, your, your work as an internal artist. When did you discover your flair? for internal artistry? Well, I worked with bugs and insects for a while, and uh, I was always fascinated by the skeletal uh, form of fish. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, you eat a, a, a well-formed fish, uh, you can't help but notice what is left on the plate. And um, I began to think about the symmetry mm -hmm. and about the, the aesthetics of our of our insides yes. and began to experiment and uh, I arrived at a certain uh, certain level of uh, of my craft whereby I, I came to the attention of people and clients come to me all the time where did you go to college well Grenada you know the, the island of Grenada sure, we invaded yeah. it's in the Caribbean uh, the uh, Grenada Medical College hmm. and uh, a very fine faculty and sure. I was there on a Ronald Reagan scholarship and uh, I, I, uh, uh, I'm sometimes invited to lecture down there. You grew up here in Taft, California. Yes, I was born in Taft, yes. And uh, I have to say that, uh, in all modesty, that I'm rather well known in Taft. Uh, uh, a favorite son, so to speak. You know, uh -huh. I could possibly run for alderman there and get some, get some success with that. Uh -huh. uh, no interest in politics, though. And uh, they even made a uh, limerick, the town poet made yeah. a limerick about me, yes. There, there was a skin surgeon of Taft who sold a man's fore to his aft. The case was the sort that wound up in court, and he was convicted of graft, you see. Well, Delightful. Yes. Yeah, well, I don't know about that, but uh, anyway, I'm well known in Taft. How did you get the first name Colin? Well, uh, actually, it's pronounced Colin most of the time, but in honor of the, both the transverse and the descending colon of the human body, I decided on that pronunciation. All right, that makes good sense. You understand, though, that there's a history in my family. Of yeah, that's what I'm confused about. I mean, it sounds like you were meant to be an artist, a sculptor. Instead of going into the medical field, why did you wind up? Uh, in well, medicine? well, you know, my name is 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 called is Colin Lister Gishray, and the Lister comes from from uh, the the great uh, the eminent English physician uh, scientist Joseph Lister. Yes, and my great great grandmother used to date uh, Joe oh. Lister. She called him Joey and. Sometimes called him, uh, you know, my shoe shoe, and which is, does not <laughs> right. refer to foot gear. It, uh, I think it's the French for, for cabbage. But uh, it, it was a term of affection. And and uh, then the, there was de a descent of the Listers in medicine, in in, in surgery, because I had a uh, he had a grand nephew named Jephthah Lister, who was a, a medical uh, a medical officer. Uh, in the clinic and army in the American Civil War. Hmm. And he used to go out on the battlefield wearing a top hat. <laughs> he was very formal, and he insisted on that top hat. And the federal troops were so astonished and by this man coming out on the field wearing a top hat instead of a helmet or any other cap that they would shoot that top hat uh, just to see it go flying off. Jeez. And he would go chasing it. 
and he would have to wear that hat while he was amputating or, or attending to wounded soldiers, right. and he had to wear that top hat. So he was a colorful man. Right, a lot of spirit. Uh, so when did you make the big transition from being an ordinary surgeon, a run-of-the-mill surgeon, not, forgive me for saying, to being uh, the internal artist that you are, the prominent internal artist? Well, I, I also had a great uh, interest in art, and uh, I liked uh, the abstractionists, uh, you know, from beginning with Picasso and coming up through de Kooning and people of that sort, and, and, uh, and Arp and, and Man Ray. Uh, and and Miro mm -hmm. and I decided that rather than uh, for you, I'm glad you picked that up uh, this is a model of the human body now look if you can see the back here they look like shoulder pads right. and there they seem to be of no particular interest whereas it, if nature had only given him epaulets that would be uh, something uh, something handsome indeed uh, and look at the if you can uh, isolate the, the the breastbone here it looks like a crab or a spider right. you see not it's very rather, attractive. Rather, not very attractive and if you could get something symmetrical something that has form uh -huh. something that is that is uh, uh, good to look at right that has symmetry well, something no, like now you pick this up good the, the, see, in this chart, there are the intestines. They're, um, they're such a mess. Mm -hmm. Really, you might as well be dropping a bunch of frankfurters or right. knockwurst. And I think that they could be arranged in a nice symmetrical pattern. Mm -hmm. And having thought that, I experimented and arrived at various patterns. Mm -hmm. um, I have to say, I hate to introduce this element, but I've been plagiarized. And I can't help noticing <laughs> that your necktie, uh, that, that was, <laughs> I hate to say it, uh, um, uh, really, uh, Gary, but that is a copy of a pattern that I had designed for, for Marcos. Really? Yes. The internal or elements yes, of Marcos? Yes, uh, elements, elements of what I was going to do for Ferdinand Marcos, uh, when he was living, of course, uh, resembled that very much. Huh, fascinating. So, uh, you operate on mainly uh, people of wealth, I take it. Well, only people of wealth can afford this kind of thing. It's, uh, it's an expensive procedure. People who are perhaps tired of the old cosmetic surgery, they want to try something different. You know what they like? To have an x-ray. Once I've rearranged their organs and shifted the bones here and there, they like to have an x-ray. There are new techniques for color x-ray. And I, you, I introduce dyes, you see, which give them color, and they bring those home. They put them on the wall. They frame them? Yes, they frame them. them. Amazing. Life-size, sometimes blown up, and there's light behind them, and it has a marvelous, sometimes a fluorescent quality. It's very attractive. Well, what about video? Have you ever actually experimented with uh, perhaps taking video of some of your work? In fact, I, I read about a, a, a Kuwaiti oil sheik that had one of your uh, your operations and he has uh, elaborate parties at his house in Beverly Hills where he has these big screens and he projects images of his insides on top of those he's an exhibitionist I've uh -huh. never given him right the, the the permission to do that and my work is copyrighted and I uh, I, I don't want to be sordid about it or, or venal but I I get a royalty mm -hmm. when those things are shown they're my creation and uh, you wouldn't uh, expect to uh, to get somebody's movie and project it right. in a home right. or cost free. I mean, the, at least before the day of the uh, of VCR. You what about the renaming of organs? Everyone? You know, there. Are, I, I I believe that uh, most of the names are, are fine. There's the uh, bulbospongiosis muscle, and there's the. Uh, Osteocavernosis muscle, and I'll leave them as they are. That's fine. But there is a there are a series of organs 
that one has called the, the superior mesenteric artery and there's the greater omentum and the inferior lobe and the inferior vena cava yeah. and the common bile duct. And I think those are patronizing names, yes. you know, and they call one thing superior and another thing inferior and common, common. Right. It's right. not democratic. Not at all. And I think uh, the, 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 our insides belong to, to the people. They yes. belong to all of us. So, uh, you know, I, I uh, am, am working with some, uh, some lexicographers on uh, names, uh, renaming some of those organs and getting rid of the superior and the greater and the inferior and the, Got it. And the common. Now, I read about this incredible uh, example of art that you did once where a smoker, a smoker came to you and it was his last days and he asked you to rearrange his blackened lungs and you did a remarkable uh, thing where you turned them into something of, a, of an art deco piece where you, you simulated uh, a 1925 New York hotel room by actually taking some extraneous tissue and, and sewing them onto his, the inside of one of his lungs to, to create the effect of a hat and cane. That's the story you read in Newsweek, yeah. That's true, but I sent the bill for that to the tobacco company hmm. for that whole operation because they were responsible ultimately for blackening his lungs. How do you practice your art? The morgue? Uh, oh, you, no, uh, that, was in this, that was in the Grenada days when we worked on ca cadavers mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I practiced it on living people, you know. Uh, as far as some of the dyes that I use, those are subject to approval by the FDA. This is fascinating work you're doing with, with the internal organs of the body and, and such. Any other uh, uh, plans any, with the body for the future? Any other ideas? Well, um, plans to keep mine in running order, f uh, you know, uh, for as long as I can. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, I'm constantly experimenting. I have a laboratory and uh, it's, uh, it takes up two acres mm -hmm. and it's uh, a little north of Glendale. And, uh, uh, it's a busy place. I have, I have students, you know, from all over the world that are coming to, uh, to learn my technique. I read in one of your journals about your experimenting with audio and actually amplifying the sounds of certain fluids through the body. Oh well, uh, the great symphony could be written around that. You know, mm -hmm. we, uh, there are gurgles and trickles and, uh, and you know, <laughs> forgive me, wind sounds, you know what mm -hmm, I mean. Sure. And uh, they, they can be orchestrated. Mm -hmm. uh, after all, we do have <laughs> you know, rec recordings of whales and porpoises. Yeah, right. And why not of the innards? And those are produced uh, internally. Hmm. And uh, we produce our sounds internally. Good heavens, our own, our own uh, conversations being produced by an right. internal organ, by the, the larynx. Well, I'll look forward to the CD of that. And uh, one other thing that I understand the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, has commissioned you and uh, artist David Hockney to, uh, to do a 300-foot fresco of the human digestive system. That is true, and we get paid by the foot. And how would you... If you were to, how would you rearrange my internal organs? Any ideas if I were to come to you? Well, I have to uh, warn you in advance that it is not the simplest procedure. You know, in order to rearrange an organ, you have to get at the organ. So there would be an incision that would begin just below your chin here and it would go straight down to your navel. And then there would be lateral incisions. And you'd be quite, op quite open, you know. There would be quite a display of mm. the inner Gary O'Brien. Huh. And then, then, you know, it's done in stages. Then we sew you up after the first stage, and then we, have to, we put zippers in uh, so that uh, the, the second and third and fourth stages w can be handled without... Uh, without uh, well, let me think about that mm. whole process. I don't even know if I have the insurance. Uh, and I well, if you had, don't have insurance. Yeah. Uh, well, Dr. Gishray, you are a visionary. There's thank no you. question about that. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being with us. This has been absolutely fascinating and sharing these, this, this, these bright ideas and uh, groundbreaking. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Bone-breaking, too, I must say. Yes. yes. Dr. Colin Lister Gishray, ladies thank and you. gentlemen. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you very much.